In this review we're looking at a couple of models in the black and red colours of Mammut. The first one is model number 410257 and it's unusual for cranes etc because it's a car model. And on the box it's described as a Mammut pool car. It's also unusual in that it comes in a Perspex case. And it's actually a bit tight fitting if you want to get the car model out. As you can see the model is fixed to the plastic base. And we'll see how to deal with that later. There was one issue on the model, one of the door mirrors was hanging off, so we called our old friend Sue Perglu. The second model is model number 410256, and it's altogether something that we're more used to. It's a Mercedes Benz Aerox with a 7 axle Notaboom low loader and a Fassi F50 crane. The packaging is high quality, it includes a collector card, and this is a limited edition made of 500 models. Instead of assembly for the car, we'll look at disassembly, and we'll take it off of its plastic base. To do that, all you need is a suitable screwdriver. And then it's just a matter of undoing the two securing screws. With that done, the pool car is set free. The Arox comes with an alternative fifth wheel if you want to fit a trailer with a fat kingpin. And there's a driver you can put in the cab, but his name must be Tricky Dicky because he's hard to get in. After that, Clunk Click joins the tractor and trailer. Let's start off with a look at the pool car, and there's nothing on it to indicate what make of car it is. Underneath the base plate is modelled with some detailing, and it's at a moderate level, and there are two holes where it was secured to the base plate. Moving to the front, and there are the details that you would expect, including nice lights, and there's a windscreen wiper. At the bottom, there's a realistic number plate. Moving the model around, you can see there's the Mammut graphic on the side. And the lifting straps and lifting bar are attached. And in fact, it's permanently attached, and also the wheels don't rotate. So there's no functionality on this model. Moving to the back, and we can see that again there's a number plate. And it's always nice to see a Mammut fleet number. Moving on to the Arox, and it's a 6x2 configuration. And it's highly detailed, including all of the suspension and transmission. There are metal tanks and boxes. And a nice touch is the limited edition number plate mounted under the cab. Moving up to the roof, and there are decent quality beacon lights. And there are also spotlights mounted on the light bar. There are nice Mammut graphics, and the Arox grille is modelled very well. Also looking good are the nice chevrons. The small graphics on the side of the cab are excellent. And again we see a Mammut fleet number. The wheels also look very smart. Behind the cab there are nice textured walkways. And the boxes look good with their chrome work and there are coiled lines. The rear wheels also look smart. At the back it's always good to see that the lights have plastic lenses. The detailing at the front of the trailer is excellent. There's a nice turntable and the underside of the timber deck looks really good. Moving down there are a couple of landing legs. And the small tyres have a decent tread pattern. This trailer is specially configured and it starts with the container at the front. It has a door at the front and an unusual looking roof. And they actually look like they're solar panels. There's detailed decoration along the edge of the trailer. And the load deck is also specially configured with various frames. And it would have been nice if the model had had some loading information for what parts it would carry. There's a yellow stripe along the deck edge. And there's an access ladder at the rear, but that might have been better if it could have been folded up. At the back of the trailer there's some nice textured walkways. And also some steps leading up to a platform. These parts and the fassy crane are all modelled in metal. And it's all an interesting detailed part. The rear of the trailer also has a high level of detail. <laughs> Back we go under the Arox and the steering has a good range of movement. So nice hard poses are possible. Let's move on to our usual rolling test and we start in a straight line. 
and the model has a nice satisfying rolling action. If we put the steering on a hard lock, it also turns very well. A feature of IMC's truck models are opening doors, and we see that here on the Arox. It's implemented well, there's no unsightly hinges, and maybe a slightly wider opening angle would have been nicer. But overall, this is an interesting way to get different posing opportunities. Moving to the seven axle trailer, and it does have linked steering on the rear six axles, but the rear axle does get fouled on that ladder at the back. But if you can avoid that, the proportional steering works reasonably well. Here the trailer is connected to the Arox and it rolls, but as you can see it's slightly bobbly. If you set the steering angle on the trailer there's still some bobbling, but it does follow a reasonable curve. At the back of the trailer is the small fassy loader crane. It opens up nicely enough and there's a telescopic section at the end. You can also rotate the crane. So let's give the crane something to lift and we'll put on the pool car. It hooks on easily enough but there's not enough stiffness in the rams of the loader crane to actually hold the load. So you have to pose the pool car in a lowered position. <laughs> car is a simple model and you can't really use it for anything else other than a load. It is good but it's a little bit pricey for what it is. The Arox and trailer is an interesting and unusual model. The standard of detailing is very high and it's a well presented model which overall is good enough to be rated as excellent. Mm -hmm. 